So. Now, how did you get the Frankfurt train or by train? By train. By train. By train. Yeah. And in Frankfurt, where were your uh, were you bivouacked in tents or were you put up? In no, surprisingly, we were bivouacked in apartment houses. In apartments, single family houses that we took over at a place called Hedernheim, Germany, which was a suburb of Frankfurt. So the company that I was assigned to was in this little town called Hedernheim, which was right outside of Frankfurt. So uh, when I got to uh, where we were at our station, we were interviewed by the, uh, the officers and the sergeant and they said, one of them said, does anyone know how to type? So I used to play around with my sister's typewriter at home. I used to write little papers. I, I wasn't a typist. So I held up two fingers. And I said, you are going <laughs> to the to our central booking station in Frankfurt, Germany. And the job was to write up the to to uh, maintain the or, or military the, the book the booking the book that they had. I'm trying to think of the term that we had for the blot what was called the blotter. Every action that went on in Germany concerning the military police was reported in the blotter in Germany. It, in Frankfurt, the job of myself, I was assigned as a clerk in the military police station of, of maintaining this blotter plus writing up statements and uh, performing other duties there. And that was primarily my job in Germany. Being, I became the chief clerk in that military police station. And well, most police action took place uh, at this military police station again. Okay, I may keep repeating. Okay. But the essence of the military police was not to, to, to maintain order among the, the troops. We had very little to do with civilians, very little. The only time we had civilian action or intercourse was, was when there were like rape cases. We had a soldier and a woman involved. Then we had, then we took statements from both, but very, very little with, with the civilians. Our, our duty wasn't to, to, to watch civilians or anything of that nature. So was, um, can you talk about Frankfurt a little bit? Was I assume Frankfurt yeah. was, was bombed pretty heavily. Frankfurt was bombed about 65 to 75 percent destroyed when I got there. However, when I got there in January of 1945, the trolley cars were running, you had constant electricity, water was running, Telephone was running. This is less than a year after we defeated Germany. And we had a Coca Cola plant line. So things were running there. Most of the buildings were destroyed there, but a lot of the utilities were running. How about food and shelter for the no inhabitants? No, no problem there. As I said, I had where the people lived, I don't know. When I first got there, uh, we, what would it, uh, I'm trying to think of the term, people could not be on the streets after like 9 o'clock at night, so they had to be off the streets. And my office was near the Frank Frankfurt, uh, or the railroad station in Frankfurt, the main railroad station. So when it came to 9 o'clock, the streets were empty, and most of the people who were on the streets, they all went to the railroad station. So at, in the evenings, the railroad stations were crowded with people, really no place to go except the railroad station. So how did you find, in, in dealing with the people, uh, the Germans, um, how did you find the I relationships? Had, no, there was no problem. With the people there. Were they, I'm assuming they were happy the war was over? 
Well, they were, right. they were still frightened of us. When we used to walk on the street, especially if you had a military, if you had a military police uniform or something, they would walk across the street. There was very little action with civilians, as far as our job was concerned. And uh, in our office, we did employ several civilians who took statements where there was an involvement with German civilians. We had interpreters to interpret what the civilian would say, and we would write up the information. Did you get involved with any legal cases involving? No, no. We wrote, we were, if someone came in, we wrote them up. Sometimes we put a recommendation. I believe it or not, I had a staff on my desk that would recommend a general court martial if something happened. And it was, oh, here I am, a kid of 18, 19. I had the discretion of rubber stamping a report yeah. to recommend a general court martial. How often did you do that? I did not have to use it once, but we had that discretion there. So how long did you stay in, in this position in Frankfurt? I was there until late, until late October of 1945. So not long? Yeah. Only a couple months? It was 10 months. That oh, 10 was months? There. 10 months there. And then what? From there I came home, uh, discharged in November of 1945, and then went to and reapplied to NYU to, to go back to school. And another thing, it, it worked out perfectly for me because when I went back to NYU, I had one term of college, went back to NYU, and with my term in the Army, which was 17 months. Well, that 17 months gave me enough time that they paid completely for my college. The GI Bill. And I was under the GI Bill. And we were part of the coming middle class because of that fact that I was able to go. That's great. What would happen if I didn't go to school? I don't know. I'd probably go to night school or something. But the government, the wonderful government, helped me put, go through school. So you got your degree, a you medical I, degree? No, I, when I got there I said, I don't think this is for me. I didn't like the teaching at NYU in, before pre-med, so I transferred over to the School of Commerce and I majored in accounting. So when I graduated, I graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree with an accounting major. So I went in that course. I started out pre-med to be a dentist, really. But I said, I was too bored. I didn't have enough money. I said, I'm not going to be able to make it. When I get out of school, I've got to earn money. So I what did you end up doing? Working in accounting, and then eventually went into computing. But being in the Army gave me that opportunity that I'd never had to go to school. So That's I had right. no regrets.